between. And, but this is weird. I didn't know anything about Salt Lake City. I didn't know anything about uh, what was going on here. Nothing. I just knew I didn't want to go here. And this is, this is God's sense of humor. This is true story. As I'm coming through, I see the lights of the city. And my heart is just, just, just broken. Lord. Send, I, I prayed this, Lord, send revival to Salt Lake City, but send somebody else. Don't send me. Don't send me, please. Don't send me. You know, and I heard before I got out of the valley and we're starting to go up towards Park City, you know, on 80, as we're going down that road there, and I hear this. I hear it loud. I hear it clear. It's almost audible. I hear this is the place. And I thought, I didn't know. I had no clue. What, I was just mad because I didn't want to come here. Um, and I said this, I said this in this, I said this to, to the Lord. I said, if you want me to come, you got to tell my wife. I'm not going to say anything to her. We've got to be on the same page or I can't do this. This is going to be too hard. But this is the place. I didn't know until till probably, probably six months after living here that I saw you, this is the place, monument place. Do you know about that? And I thought, funny, that is really funny, Lord. Yeah, that's just not really nice. And so, so, we got into Greeley. We got into Greeley, you know, driving here, and I didn't want to go. And, uh, and as, as, as we got out, it was too early to have meetings yet with some of the people that we're going to meet with to start the church. And, uh, and so she gets out. There's a picnic bench there at the park we stopped at. She gets the map out before GPS, you know, units. So we got the map out, and she says, well, how long do you think it'll take us to get back to Salt Lake City? I go, really? What? What are you saying? no, no. And I thought, this is what I thought. I thought, God, what did she do that you're going to punish us for this? All right, you're going to punish us. Go back to Salt Lake City. I said, all right, because I didn't know anything about this place at all. And we jumped back in the car, turned around, and um, came back to Salt Lake City and said, okay, Lord, if this is what you're doing, then we'll go. We don't know anybody here. We just know this is what you're doing. If you're doing this, then we'll do it. We'll do it. Well, our house, our house was, was starting to put a house on the market because we knew we were moving somewhere. We didn't know where. And put, in California, the housing market was collapsing. Nobody was buying houses. Our house, when we said yes to the Lord within the next week, our house sold for full price. Full price. Okay. Um, I remember when that happened, I remember saying, Lord, I met another $2,000. You know, that would help us. But no, it sold for full, for full price. We ended up having to move in with my mother-in-law. <laughs> that was fun. And um, for a very for a short time, while well, I came out here to try to find a job, to try to meet some people, and I was sleeping in the living room of, of a couple that I had met that was interested in what we were doing and all that. And we started the adventure out here. We started the adventure. Well, praise God, we had the sale of the house. We were able to, we were able to get a house, and that helped us a lot. We wanted, we wanted house payments we wanted house payments that were no more than about four hundred dollars, all right. So and uh, and so we got so we got so we got a, we got a house here, and we just said, okay, now what are we going to do? I'm just going to go out and start talking to people about Jesus, you know. And this is back. This is Salt Lake City thirty years ago. That's an interesting thing to do in this town. Everybody's everybody's they'll talk to you about Jesus, but it's it's a different conversation that you're having. So K-A-N-N Radio, K-A-N-N Radio. I think they're still around, right? Can Radio. Uh, they, uh, they, they found out what I was doing, and I asked them, I said, well, can I do, a, can I do a, maybe a message or something? They said, no, we'll let you do a public service announcement on our radio program, public service announcement. I said, okay. So we did a public service announcement, you know, Calvary Chapel, coming to Salt Lake City, you know, uh, Tuesday night. Bible study. Here's the address. Here's the phone number. If you'd like to come, just show up. Okay. And I thought, well, let's see what happens with that. Our house, that first night filled up with people. Now it's people. Now, all those people became friends in the, in the long run. But with that first night, it was like, this is scary. In fact, my wife would not let us go to bed at all until I went and checked under the bed and the closets to make sure we didn't have an axe murderer waiting for us because they were some scary looking people. Little did we know they're all become good friends and, and some of those people are still in our church today if they're still alive, <laughs> you know, but because uh, that was 30 years ago. And we began right there, all right? We began crazy. <laughs> we began right there in our living room and and here we're having worship practice. I was the pastor. I was the worship leader. 
And uh, we're busy right Look at that face. We're busy right now. Stop taking pictures. All right. So, uh, but we started in our living room. We started our living room with people that were just, just interested in what was going on. And one of the things that, that God taught us in this journey, and, and we're still learning, is that God loves people. We need to love God, but we got to love people. And I had to learn this. I tell you, people that come uh, new to Salt Lake City that are wanting to plant churches and all that, and they say, well, you've been here for 30 years. You've been planting, you planted this church, uh, and you have anything to say? I said, yeah, I can tell you, I can tell you how not to do church. I got, I got at least 15 to 20 years on how not to, how not to reach people. I thought I was going to kick butt, take names, and build a church. I'm going to come in. I'm going to set doctrine straight. I'm going to come in and tell everybody what's wrong with their doctrine, and then I'm going to correct their doctrine. And we had a pretty dysfunctional church. We had a pretty hard church. And, and, uh, and yet then God started doing the work. He actually did a work back several years ago. And some of you have been here for a while. You remember this, that I had a Sunday morning. And I'll just be straight up with you where my, my journey on this thing is that I had a Sunday morning that I got up and I didn't want to go to church. I'm the pastor. You'll probably call me if I just don't show up. Okay, pastor, what are you doing? All right. So, but I didn't want to come to church. I actually didn't want to do this anymore. It's not that I didn't want to preach or talk about Jesus. I didn't want to do the church thing anymore. And why was that? Because, because we were mean to one another. Because here's the thing. We were all about, here's the things we're against instead of here's the things that we're for. And I said, Lord, I, want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And it was almost audible. God says, look, you're the pastor. If you don't like it, change it. It's like, that's totally uncool. You're God. Kill them. If you'll just <laughs> kill some people, that will help. Right? And I said that, and I said that this, I said that that morning. I says, look, and I've said it just about every Sunday since then. I said, look, this is going to be a safe place for people to come and learn about Jesus. We're going to love each other. We're going to love each other. And in some of that process, as we were being, some people, some people moved on. They wanted to be in a more legalistic church that says, this is what we're for, and this is what we're against. And if you, don't, if you don't line up with what we believe, then you need to do something else, and you will burn in hell forever and ever. Now, here's what I'm saying. There's a God that loves you, that's passionate about you. And join the journey. This is, this is a journey. We're learning. We're learning this together. And God has changed. I cry a lot more now. God has done a work in, in my life, in our life as a church. I love to see what God is doing. Jumping ahead, you see as God begins to move, and, and I miss these days that we're going back to them. All right, talk about the future. We're, we're going back to them. This was, at, this was in 2018 at, at uh, Southtown at Easter. How about 2019 at Bravenau Hall? Wasn't that fun? How many was there? That was great. We'll do that again if we can get Bravino Hall. We were trying to do it last year, and they wouldn't let us do it. They said, yeah, you can do it. You can have any more than 200 people in the venue, and everyone has to wear masks, and you have to social distance. 200? That ain't going to work. And so we didn't do it last year, but uh, we'll do it. Lord willing, we'll do it this year. Great worship that we, that we did, and, and uh, it was one of those moments. I almost stopped and cried during the, the service because I panicked just a moment. You know, usually I'm pretty confident in what, because we're in the Word of God, I can go verse by verse, and we're just seeing what, we're learning, we're just learning together. It's kind of like I feel like sometimes we could do this at my kitchen table if there wasn't so many of us. We'll just sit and we'll open the Bible and we'll talk about the Bible, because that's what it feels like on Sunday many times. We're just open the Bible talking about it. But this was a little different. Now it's a little different too, because it's topical. But on that, on that one, halfway through the message, uh, my, my iPad that I had completely just went out. All my notes and stuff, which I, you know, I usually don't use too many notes, you know, and uh, I even forgot what I just said. If you remember that, if you remember that, I asked you, I said, so let me see if you're paying attention. Who remembers my last point? You know, <laughs> and they said, I go, oh yeah, that was it, that right there, and then I go, and who can maybe think about what my next point should be? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I said, okay, so I had this little panic moment. If you remember that, there was a moment I stopped in the middle of the service. And I, I walked across the stage doing baby shark doo 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 doo, doo baby shark doo 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 doo. I was trying to get my bearings, all right? <laughs> little, little side note on that thing. But it was neat to watch God do a work in that group, to see people that are saved and see, see people, see God doing a work. 
And as, as we go down this, now that's jumping ahead a little bit. We'll talk some more about next time on the future of it. But one of the things that we've learned on this, this journey that we're on is that where God guides, God provides. God takes care of stuff. God's got this. We, haven't, we don't have to manipulate. We don't have to force you to do anything. You just follow God. This is a journey and this is an adventure together. But where God guides, God provides. And we've never had to, to push or shove to make things happen. You know, we had, we had absolutely uh, 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 at the beginning of an open door to take over the Fun Dome. Remember that? Remember the Fun Dome that, that became a school and K2 was in there for a while and, and all that. And, uh, and we looked at it. Even had a bank that, was, that we're sizing up to say the bank would loan us the money. We could do all this thing. We'd be building rich and ministry poor. And I said, no, you know, we're not going to do that. There's no way we're going to do that. I'm not going to do that. God guides, God provides. I'm going to trust in God. If God wants us to move, he'll make it really clear. And every step of the way, we've seen God faithful. Every step of the way. I want to tell you the story of, I need to speed up a little bit, but uh, tell you the story of of the various buildings we've been in and how God has moved us step by step. Where God guides, God provides. So we outgrew our home really quickly. And, uh, you know, because you can only get so many people. After you get about 30 or 40 people in our home, they're just, no, they're in the kitchen, they're in the living room, they're, they're, there's no place else to go. So he gave us this place was the, the downtown community center, downtown community center. And so we're down there. So this was perfect, a perfect place, large meeting place, kids, classrooms for the kids and all that. And our very first Sunday was conference Sunday. We had no clue what Conference Sunday is. We had no clue what that was. We're in downtown Salt Lake, and everything is shut down. Not only is everything shut down, our very first Sunday here in this building, the guy that was supposed to unlock it for us uh, forgot to unlock it. It's conference weekend. I'm not getting out of bed. I'm going to be right here. And he didn't unlock it for us. So we have all these people starting to show up, brand new church, lots of advertisement, telling people about this new church, and we can't get in. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Well, I thought, what a great adventure. Look what God's doing. And I told my wife, guess what? We're moving everything back to the house on Sunday morning with all these people. My wife's going, no, you're not. I did not. The house is not ready for that because it doesn't matter. You, got, you, you can be like five minutes ahead of us. And she ran to the house, got everything ready. We, we did the house. Now, the next Sunday that we're in this building, guess what I had? A pair of bolt cutters. All right, we will. I ran this place. We will, and twice I had to cut the bolt off of off of the thing to get in. It's like we will. I have been saved for a little bit, but not so long. I don't know how to break into stuff. I can break into this place. All right. So we moved. So we had to we had to move everything in, everything in every Sunday, and uh, we had to. This was the first bookstore that we had. We had a large bookstore for a while before Amazon took us out. But uh, had the bookstore. There's John. He's in heaven now. But um, and again, I was the I was the worship leader. I was the pastor. I was doing all this stuff uh, because it was a brand new church, just getting to know people. As people started coming forward, our first Sunday school class. I love this man, Richard. He's in heaven now. But uh, he was our first children's ministry director, and that's the first Sunday school right there that we started. And and we just. It just continued to grow. One service, two services. You know, we're always out preaching, looking for opportunities to get in the community, to tell people about Jesus. This was uh, going up to Provo Canyon, that one. What's that? Provo River. River. That thing is cold. That thing is freezing. And we used to do baptisms up there. So we'd do once a month. We'd go up there when we could. And uh, when the weather was right, we'd do the baptisms up there. And you see, you know, uh, one of our sound guys still here, George. I think George is a, I looked at this picture the other day. I say, George is a vampire. He looks exact. this guy right here, he looks exactly the same today. <laughs> I need to chat with that guy. I think he's a vampire. <laughs> Paul Rotman, Paul, is Paul here? Paul, there's a couple of them still here. These are the early days. Bonnie's in heaven and so is Lori. They're both in heaven. But, uh, but here's what we learned. And this is, actually, this is our first youth pastors right here, once upon a time. But... We learn this as we go down this road together. It's not just a team, it's a family. You hear me say this a lot, and this is because I want this to be part of the DNA of our church, is find some friends and do what? You got it, to grow old together. That's what it's all about. 
It's being a family. It's not just a team. And I think that's probably one of the problems that we had is for all those years, we were a team. We were a good team. We we're building a church. God was moving. Things were happening. We saw things happen. And, and yet the family atmosphere where I got your back, you got my back. We're in this together through the good times and the difficult times. We're all in this together. Well, as we're going down this journey now, we outgrew the building that we're in. And right up the street here at Reams Shopping Center, I was talking to the guy that owned that complex up there, and I said, you know, I really need a building. Why don't you just do this? Do you want to get to heaven? I might be able to put a good word in for you. Here's what you need to do. You've got, rent me this space here, which is the, the space itself is probably the size, the entire space was probably the size of this room right here. I said, so give us this space right here. We'll rent this. And then you have all this space that's just empty. So give us the rest of those for free, and if you rent them out, then we'll move out of there. We'll just trust in God. And so he goes, okay. And so he gave us this corner unit. I don't know if you guys were there. This corner unit. Aztec Copy went away right away. This went away right away. And it was, it was a uh, restaurant that really, that really focused on cockroaches. All right? Because there was cockroaches in this. Because of that restaurant, there were so many cockroaches. I don't, I don't know if I should tell you this. Because you have, you have we are, we're right here up in this corner. This is where the sanctuary is at. This is where the youth ministry is at. There was a, some, some uh, space here. Then you had the restaurant that was here. And then you had the, some space that was right here. That was the children's ministry. I don't know if I should tell you this or not. But, but me and my wife before, and my kids, my daughter reminded me of this because she was part of that. We would get there before anybody else in the morning on Sunday. We would take all, the, all of the toys out in the parking lot and shake them all out and wipe them all down to make sure there wasn't any cockroaches in them. Right? I know, isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. I remember teaching the Word as we're, as we're there and teaching the Word. And you know, I got the, the Bible over says, you know, the Bible says, bam, hit that cockroach is running up the wall. You know? <laughs> so... But again, we began to go to one service, two service, three services there, and God just kept, kept blessing us. See, my wife had a mullet too. Ha ha. Okay. So, okay. So, but we had so many friends help us. We had a huge network of friends that are all, all like key people in the Calvary Chapel movement that helped us. Chuck Gerard would come out and, and have him do it from Love Song. He'd come out and do a um, concert. This man was a major part of a mentor to me for so many years. He's in heaven now. Who is this? This is Chuck Missler. I don't know if you know that name. If you don't, go online, listen to this guy. What a great Bible teacher. He was a guy that checked on us on a regular basis. There are several of them. Raul Reese, another one, and Chuck Smith and others uh, would check on us regularly to see how we're doing. You know, would, would, would contact us. How you doing? What's going on? And then some of these guys, him and David Hawking and others, would come out at least once a year, sometimes multiple times a year, just to critique what I was doing. You know, just to come out. And I asked them to do it. I said, help me with this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have a clue. Help me. You guys are, are, are seasoned pastors. You know, you just saw Terry and Nancy was just here recently, you know, long-term, long-term friends. But as this thing is growing and we got, praise God, we got a big support group that's there that's praying for us because they wanted to see that most of them knew, Chuck knew and others, Chuck Smith knew and others, that there had been a lot of Calvary chapels here that didn't make it. In fact, when we first came out, Chuck, you know, I said, hey, uh, God's calling us to Salt Lake City. He said, it'll be easy to start, a, uh, it'll be as easy to start a church in Salt Lake City as it would be in Bangkok. And I went, what? That does not help me. That scares me. That scares me. And they brought me up in front of a, a group of pastors and they prayed for us to send us out. And, and, uh, but here, as this was going, um, always outside. And we're, gonna, we, we, we're not going to stop this. COVID really slowed us down on these outdoor events. I'm an outdoor guy. I like being outside. I preached, uh, when we first came to town, I preached down at Liberty Park Every, it was like a, I forgot now, like a Tuesday or Thursday night, whatever night it was. Every, every, that night I was always out there at Liberty Park preaching if there was good weather, you know, and always had, always had people that would come out and say, who's this weirdo screaming up on the hill with his open Bible? And I just teach the Bible and people were coming and things were happening. So always out in the open, we're going to continue doing that. Always looking at other ways to, to reach out. This was terrible. This was a super bad idea. It sounded good. It, it, it sounded good on paper, but this is, this is at one of, our, one of our hallelujah parties for Halloween. Big mega event at our church now. 
Uh, but uh, man, one time, this happened one year. The next day I took a skill saw and cut that thing up. All right, that was terrible. I didn't like that at all. So again, getting to the point where we need, we, Lord, guide us. Guide us. Where are we to go? And, uh, and then this building came available. Uh, this one had some issues because, the, because the, the group that was in it before us was very satanic. All right? I mean, literally satanic. I mean, channeling demons and that kind of thing. So we had to get in this building and really clear it out of all that, all that demonic activity that was there. And it was, it was physical. You could see it. What was, go- what was going on there. But got in there and moved into that building. But this building, so I moved into this building going, well, this is cool. We could be a one service. One service. We, we said, well, we need to do something else. Saturday night service. Three Sunday morning services. A Sunday night service. Five services in, uh, every weekend. And I was standing at the front door going, uh, it, between the services on Sunday morning, having to say this, okay, hold on now. You can't, we can't have any more in the building. The building can't handle it anymore. Can you come back next service? But don't go too far because you want to come in. As soon as this one lets out, you want to come in. And so we were, people kept coming and, uh, and we didn't, have a, we didn't have any way to baptize people. So we did this, this hot tub on wheels. This was fun. Hot tub on wheels. There's my daughter. She's so sassy, still is. Now she's got her own kids now. But here's a cool thing. So, so once a month, we'd bring the hot tub there. We'd rent the hot tub, bring in the parking lot. We'd have, we'd have these, uh, these baptisms. I even, check this out. I baptized Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know who this is, but I thought that was cool. So uh, Coach Henderson there. This was really cool, uh, baptizing my dad. Well, there, what were there? But there was a guy, I was doing the baptisms. <laughs> doing a baptism, there was a guy behind us that really did not want us there. And so he was always being angry. And uh, Braveheart had just come out. Remember Braveheart? Braveheart had just come out. And uh, so he drove up. And, and he said his kids were throwing rocks at his house. They were not. But he, he drove up right in the middle of this baptism. And, you know, it's like a spiritual moment. He flies up in this car in the parking lot, jumps out, comes right to me. And, he's, and he has this rock in his hands and he throws it at my feet. And I go, you dropped your rock. <laughs> you <know? laughs> oh, the veins are sticking out in his neck. I wanted him to know Jesus or at least go see Jesus do something. Go do something, okay? So, if you were there in those days, I don't know if any of you were there in those days, we had concerts all about every other week. We had a major concert there, and, uh, and the police were there every single week because people called the cops on us because we're in a neighborhood, right? And so still doing the outreach and all that. But here in this building, we said, look, we can't, five services, we got to do something else. And so we started, we said, okay, let's buy one of the houses. So the house that's backed up right at the parking lot, we bought the house, okay, we gutted it and turned it into the youth room, okay, additional parking, turned into the youth room. And then all the neighbors are going, hey, buy our house next. And we're like, we can't just buy the neighborhood up. That's not working, okay, until, and then all of a sudden, we heard from the Assembly of God, Metro Fellowship, was uh, their building was going to be available. This one right here. This one right here. And they said, look, here's what we're going to do. You're, you come from a similar God background. There's $100,000 that they, they need to clear in this thing. And so if you, if you will come and become a, would come a similar God, once again, come back to the fold. We'll just give you the church building. You'll have about a million dollars in equity and we'll give you the building. Uh, and you just, pick up, you just pick up the payments where they left off and, and all that. And if you don't want to do that, we still want to give you the building, but you got to come up with uh, $100,000. $100,000? I said, okay, we'll do that one because I'm not giving, I'm not, uh, uh, we're not doing this. You know, I'm not going to become similar to God. God's, God's got me where I'm supposed to be. And uh, we don't have, we don't have $5,000. We don't have no money. But what is it? God guides, God provides. God guides, God provides. And so I hit everybody up I knew for money. I asked Chuck Smith, I asked Raul Reese, I asked everybody that I knew. I said, hey, hit me, give me some money, give me some money. You know, here's an opportunity. Well, I, one of the board members from the Costa Mesa Calvary called me up and said, give me your banking number. And because they said, no, they said, we didn't have it. They didn't have it. They said, give me your banking information. I said, no, give me yours. I need yours. They didn't even need mine. I need yours. He said, no, give me your banking information. I said, all right, I'm going to trust you. So I give a bank, and somebody, I still to this day don't know, wired us $100,000. So 
so we can get in this building. That was actually pretty cool. That was pretty cool. But we got in this building and, and we've seen God move. Now, here's what I want to do next time, because we're totally out of time here, is this. It's good, and, and, and we can spend a lot more time. There's a lot of stories what God has done in those 30 years. God has been faithful over and over and over again. What I want to do next time is I want to flip it around and say, this is where we're going. This is, what God, this is what we're learning, and this is where we're going. This is what God is doing. This is what we've learned, and we'll continue to talk about that. And then we'll get back in the Word and keep doing what we're doing, you know. But do understand this. We're not done yet. 30 years 30 years. I gave God 10 years of my life here. I told God when I first, the best thing I did, okay, when I moved here, I told God, I'll give you 10 years of my life in Salt Lake City. 10 years, one day I'm gone. I'm not going to stay. This is going to be too hard, all right? And one of the pastors that was leaving when I was coming in, he says, you know what it's like planting a church in Salt Lake City? 30 years ago. You know what it's like planting a church in Salt Lake City? It's like picking the ground, concrete ground with a spoon. And he says, keep picking it. Keep picking it. Don't give up. Well, what are you doing? I'm out. He says, I'm out. I'm out of town. I'm, I'm gone. This is great. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So we got to 10, so 10 years. And I told my friends, 10 years. I'm leaving in 10 years. And uh, I had a friend of mine call me on the 10th year anniversary. I totally forgot about it. And the 10th year anniversary. So he says, so, oh, hey, where are you going next? Where are you going next? I go, what do you mean where I'm going next? He goes, well, today's your anniversary for the 10th year. I go, really? Really? I'd forgotten about that. I go, I ain't going. I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying. It took 10 years of us saying we're not going to quit. We're not going to. I, I would have made it. There's no way I would have made it if I didn't give him that 10-year commitment. About eight years, bam, we were here. It took us about eight years to, to stay. And now we're here 30 years. I ain't going nowhere. I already bought a grave, all right? <laughs> But yeah, what an adventure we've been on. So, I'm gonna, so we're going to stop. We're going to pray. And again, this is not the norm. But I think it's really helpful for us to pause sometimes. And we need to do this, especially now. It's 30 years. 30 years. If you go back 30 years, time travel back 30 years right now, we're loading up right now to come here to, to, to start the church right now. And so I look back at those 30 years. I say, God, you've been so faithful. You've been so faithful, you know. And great things he has done. Not because I'm, I'm an idiot, all right? Don't agree with that, all right? So, but we're all, we're all just, you know, here's this. I'm just one beggar telling other beggars where I found bread. This is where God's got a hold of me, you know? And I've thought, I've thought about this a lot over the years, that God used a donkey. Remember the Old Testament? To talk to the prophet Balaam. If he used an ass in the past, he can use an ass now. So there we go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God, you're faithful to us. You're so faithful to us. Lord, thank you for this family. Thank you for the things that we've learned. Lord, as this last 30 years, Lord, and to, to just pause for a minute as we're looking, as we're, we're putting to rest that this last year. Because next week, Lord, we got a brand new year ahead of us. So Lord, as we look back, we see your faithfulness. We see your love. We see you working. We see you taking a bunch of misfit people. And Lord, and you used us and you love us. And you continue to love us. You continue to forgive us. You continue to lead us on. So, Lord, we look forward to what you want for the next 30 years until we're home. Lord, you're faithful. You guide us. You direct us. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray for each one in this room. Lord, a long time ago, you got a hold of me. And you changed my life. It was a simple prayer. It was believing in my heart. And right now, right where you're at, if you've not said this prayer, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Right now is your day. Right now is your time. It's not about being religious. It never was about that. It's almost exactly the opposite of being religious. It's a relationship. And right now, between you and God, this is personal. This is your moment. Forgive me, God. Help me to follow you. Help me to trust in you. You say that prayer right now. He's here. Maybe you need to come back to him. He loves you. You're so faithful to us, God. And Lord, we long for home. This world is coming unglued. So Lord, help us to stay focused on you, trusting in you. We love you, Jesus. We love you a lot. Let's all stand together.